Some trucks are made for work, some are made for play, and some are made for looking pretty while you Google the difference between a ball valve and a gate valve when you're sitting in the hardware store parking lot. Because you see, today a pickup truck is as much about making a statement as it is living a lifestyle. And now this truck was made for work. It's made for a little bit of play. It's made in Texas and it's made to get dirty. The 2021 Toyota Tundra looks like the last of the work first trucks. So today we are going to determine if that means it needs to be put out to pasture or if it means that you should go and scoop one up before it gets redesigned next year. Of course, before we do that, be sure to subscribe to the CarGurus YouTube channel and you can hit the bell icon to receive a notification every time we publish a new video. Let's get to work. All modern full-size pickup trucks are big. That's just a fact. So let's get it out of the way. You cannot look at a pickup truck today and say it's too big because they are all too big. For a jumble of reasons, if you want a vehicle that's capable of this kind of work, well then the size is just coming with the territory. But the Tundra is really big. Unlike Ford and Chevy, Toyota doesn't sell the Tundra with a regular two-door cab. Your only options are a double cab with full-size doors in the front and sort of three-quarter size doors behind those, or this, the Crewmax cab, which is basically a limousine. I'll show you in a minute, but Rob Gronkowski doesn't need this much legroom. Now, Toyota sells the Tundra in an array of pretty drab colors, but there are some bright spots. Cavalry blue is okay, Barcelona red metallic pops, and I love Toyota's army green. It's worth noting, however, that Toyota no longer offers army green on the off-road focused TRD Pro trim. It's been replaced by a new color called Lunar Rock. And then on the 1794 Platinum and Limited trims, you can get the new Windchill Pearl color. It's white. Our car? is a refreshingly common SR5 trim that's been dressed up with the Trail Edition package. That costs $2,930 and it adds things like these 18-inch wheels, Michelin all-terrain tires, the chrome front grille, and some interior trimmings. The color? Cement. At the back, you have some choices. Double cab Tundras get either a six and a half foot or an 8.1 foot truck bed, but if you get the NBA friendly Crew Max cab, your only option is the five and a half foot bed. All beds are 22.2 inches deep, maximum payload measures 1,730 pounds, and the max towing capacity comes in at 10,200 pounds. No, those aren't class leading numbers, but I suspect they'll be enough for your day to day needs. With the Trail Edition, we get a spray-on bed liner and lockable storage boxes built into the fenders. This one is insulated, but they're not the easiest to get into. You kind of have to be in the bed to really dig in there because they're not positioned up here like a Ram 1500's Ram boxes. Want a V8? The Tundra's got a V8. Actually, the Tundra's got only a V8. No turbochargers, no six cylinders, no diesel engines, no mild hybrids, just 5.7 liters of naturally aspirated V8 grunting. Paired with a six speed automatic transmission, this powertrain gives you 381 horsepower and 401 pound feet of torque. That's enough to get some serious work done, and you can't talk about the Tundra without recognizing its reputation for reliability. That's a Toyota badge after all. Still, the six-speed auto is outclassed by pretty much everything in the segment, and it doesn't exactly help the Tundra return sterling fuel economy. With rear-wheel drive, the EPA estimates a Tundra will do 13 miles per gallon in the city, 17 on the highway, 15 combined. With four-wheel drive, like our test truck has, that combined number drops to 14. On the bright side, our truck also has the SR5 upgrade package which raises fuel tank capacity from 26.4 gallons to 38 gallons, the largest in the segment. And that means that even getting just 14 miles per gallon on a full tank of gas, I should be able to cover 532 miles. Of 
Of course, it would also cost me about $100 to refill the truck after I drove those miles. Now, driving a vehicle this big, particularly on city streets, definitely takes some getting used to because it is big. The mirrors offer good visibility, but they're practically blind spots in their own right. You've got to take turns wide. Normal acceleration is slow. You can feel a mountain of power in this engine, but if you want to unleash it, you're going to need to make a lot of noise. Body roll is what you'd expect from a pickup, maybe a little more. The suspension is a bit bouncy. Toyota equips the Tundra with coilover springs in the front and leaf springs in the rear with outboard staggered shocks to help with control and dampening but nobody is going to use the word refined when talking about a Tundra. In a vehicle of this size, safety is somewhat assumed. I mean, you're not gonna be worried about excessive damage when your Toyota Tundra gets fender bendered by a Mitsubishi Mirage. On the other hand, the frontal crash and rollover protection scores from the NHTSA only come in at four out of five stars. Driving something this large does take a bit more focus, whether you're on the highway or on city streets. Luckily, Toyota equips the Tundra with Toyota Safety Sense P, which includes lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, auto high beams, and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. Our test truck also has blind spot monitoring, front and rear parking sensors, and rear cross traffic alert as part of the $970 convenience package. In terms of other tech, the Tundra doesn't exactly look or feel advanced, but it's not archaic either. The base SR trim gets a seven inch touchscreen. We have an eight inch touchscreen that could use a design refresh, but it's available with Android Auto. The screen suffers some distortion when I wear my polarized sunglasses. To be fair, that's not entirely Toyota's fault. I mean, they're not the nicest sunglasses, but I also don't run into that problem in pretty much any other vehicles. In terms of the stereo, our test truck has a nine speaker system that sounds pretty good, but you can get a 12 speaker JBL system in the 1794, the Platinum and the TRD Pro trims, and that one undoubtedly sounds better. To put it plainly, the Tundra is just one of those trucks that puts work tech ahead of play tech. This is a truck for truck stuff. That sentiment extends everywhere on the interior. We're in the lower end SR5 trim, and yes, you can dress things up by buying a limited, platinum, or the western style 1794 trim, but here, this interior is ready for a hard life. Plastic components, massive seats, a comically large center console, and huge HVAC controls. You don't dial it in specifically to 71 degrees with this. You just rotate it over to about two o'clock and hope that keeps you comfortable. The seats in our SR5 trim are equally rudimentary. You actually get a 40-20-40 split fold down bench up front with four-way adjustment for the driver and passenger. The SR5 upgrade package gives you the bucket seats and the center console. These seats are big and soft, so like an overstuffed armchair, you're never gonna be uncomfortable. But they're only six-way adjustable, with lumbar support only for the driver's seat. And the rear seat doesn't really adjust at all, but it is absolutely massive. With the Crew Max cab, you'll have more rear seat legroom than pretty much any vehicle on the market. And it also folds up for carrying large items that you don't wanna put in the bed. And behind me is one of my favorite features on the Tundra. Check out the power sliding rear window. Get ready for Toyota to throw all of this out next year in favor of a redesign because this is an old truck, 13 years old. But in many ways, its age is actually one of the Tundra's selling points. It's time tested with enough copies sold that we can actually estimate its reliability. And it's just the last vestige of the classic pickup truck that puts work first and soccer practice second. Next year, we're getting an all new Tundra with a new platform, new engines, maybe a hybrid. I mean, this is Toyota we we're talking about. But it's also likely to get a little more expensive. Our test truck came in at $49,040.
drop a few options in the Trail Edition package and suddenly you have a perfectly capable pickup truck, full size pickup truck, for what, 45 grand? That's not bad. We want to hear what you'd like to see on the 2022 Tundra, or maybe you'd prefer to drive this one home instead. Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you'd like to read George Kennedy's full review of the 2021 Toyota Tundra, just head to cargurus.com.